Zerkfontein is a site in South Africa. There have been a lot of hominid fossils found there, uh, especially of Australopithecus. Um, they found a nearly complete skeleton in the bottom part of the cave. I started working there back in the early 2000s. We first published a date on that in 2003 using uh, aluminum 26 and beryllium 10. Some work that we did here at Prime Lab. We originally came up with an age of about 4 million years for that fossil, which seems a little bit too old. Um, other people have worked at the cave and they've come up with younger ages than we had, and this is something that I've really wanted to solve for a long time. Uh, we've tried to run samples from Sturkfontein over the years. I've brought back samples from the site. We bring back rocks. Uh, we've brought back stone tools from different levels of the cave. And we've never really been able to get good results until just this year. So we have samples that we brought back from right around the skeleton. And we have samples of stone tools from higher up in the cave. We analyzed those on the uh, accelerator here with the new gas-filled magnet. And suddenly, we're able to get measurements where we weren't able to before. And so we're able to show now, with a high degree of confidence, we have a lot of samples here, that the sediments around that skeleton are about 3.6, 3.7 million years old. Uh, so now we have a really good age for that fossil. We have a really good age for the flowstone that's much younger around it. And I think we've resolved the controversy around the age of the skeleton. So this is called a gas-filled magnet, the big blue chamber, and then there's a smaller cylindrical blue chamber after that, which is the detector. And the, what this does for us, for us is it allows us to separate the thing we want to measure, like aluminum 26, from interfering ions like magnesium 26. And it turns out that there'll be a whole lot more magnesium 26 in a sample than there will be aluminum 26 by many, many orders of magnitude. And so if that magnesium gets into the detector, it swamps the detector and it doesn't let us see the aluminum 26 in this sea of counts of magnesium 26. So by running the beam or the ions into this magnet chamber that's filled with about eight tor of uh, nitrogen, then this allows us to put the magnesium and the aluminum on slightly different uh, uh, radii of curvature. And so the aluminum 26 makes it into the detector and the magnesium 26 doesn't make it into the detector. So then we have a nice clean signal. It's unambiguous and we know exactly how much aluminum 26 is in the uh, is in the sample then. Okay, so as it turns out, one of the reasons I came to Purdue uh, 13, 14 years ago is I wanted to work on this. This is what I've been wanting to do for uh, probably 20 years. So we're measuring uh, aluminum 26 with it right now. We're successfully measuring beryllium 10 with it. We're also measuring chlorine 36. But as soon as we get some development time, which I hope will be in the next couple of months, we'll start measuring even other things like manganese 53, perhaps calcium 41. And the idea here is that this gives us a capability that does not exist in the United States right now.